Welcome to the Supercharged Video Show, where I interview interesting and inspiring people right inside the Tesla. Guess who is in my car with me right now? Who? Melissa Rose, my good friend from way back. We actually went to high school together. We went to junior high together. Well, we did. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, did we know each other then? No. I Maybe. think I was cooler than you, you were. Yeah, you were in the cool kids group. <laughs> I, I was in the who knows what group. So it took me many, many years to actually get to meet Melissa because she was so cool. But once I did, it's been it's been great ever since. And we actually both now live in Phoenix, Arizona. And I wanted to have Melissa on because she does some really cool stuff. And, well, let's have her tell us about it. So, so I had a company called Biz and Box, and uh, we do entrepreneurship for kids is our niche, but we uh, we get these kids out and actually starting little micro businesses and learning about entrepreneurship basically on the streets. Grab your keys, oh, get out the door, and uh, so we've got... Uh, well, explain, back up a little bit and explain yeah. Biz in the Box so people kind of get the concept and then... So, so the easiest way to explain it is um, my daughter is, is who I you know, created it for, really with the intention just of teaching her yeah. um, how to start uh, a business. And it was because she was in the sixth grade and she was on the cusp of flunking math. And I thought, you know, who flunks math in the sixth grade, right? You're, everybody's right. supposed to know math at that point. And, uh, and so it wasn't that she was, she was flunking it because you get a tutor, right? It was that the kid really didn't care that she was flunking math. Right, and, right. And her writing skills were even worse than her math skills. So um, it was during the recession, and I thought, oh, my God. All I had were visions of this kid living with me for the rest <laughs> of my life. <laughs> right. And, uh, and so I figured, well, you know, if I could teach her how to start a business, maybe she'll be accountable to her customers. She'll be accountable to her schoolwork, she'll learn some leadership, how to make decisions, and it was great. You know, that was just an optimal solution. Right. And so I proposed it to her, and she pretty much said said no. And so she didn't have that entrepreneurial spirit, but what she liked was money, and, and what uh, money yeah. meant. Money, money's freedom, especially when you get into junior high and stuff. Right, right. So, so I created Biz in a Box, it took me about a year, and created one for 11 to 14 year olds, which is the one that she had, um, and then seven to 10 year olds, and then 15 and older. And it's basically a do-it-yourself entrepreneurship kit. So they take any idea for a business, and, and each section goes through the, the topics, and it asks them uh, questions so that they're formulating a functional business plan. I say a functional one because it's meant for them to yeah. to use as they run their business and, and make changes to it. Now, so the different packages, though, they're kind of geared toward a different skill set as they mature? Different, that that different so. age groups. So so young kids, you know, your, your second, third, fourth grade, fifth grade, have uh -huh. a really difficult time with costs and profits. Right. So they're very good at, at marketing, but they're horrible when it comes to money because I think they're... They're used to someone gives me money, <laughs> and, I go, and I go spend it, and that item belongs to me versus I I have money, I spend it on something, and I sell it again to make more money. It's a it's a hard concept for them. Right. So what you can teach a high schooler, you have to really dummy it down to teach just really the basics for um, you know a kid in elementary school, so that because you want them to go and practice and do it and and. Right. Test it out, and as they grow, their their skill sets grow as well. Cool, cool. So then you, uh, so then you, you you put the concept, and then now, but you're you've really grown it. So tell us how you did all that. So, so I I get involved in uh, the Scottsdale School District, and I'm trying to push this entrepreneurship thing, and the administrators are like, no, we don't really care. And so their concern was, how do we get girls, particularly, how do we get girls interested in science? And so I, I proposed to um, 
one of the gals who, who writes the grant, and I said, okay, well, let me create a science module around uh, soaps. And soaps? We'll, soaps. 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 <laughs> like wash. <laughs> like soaps, right. Yeah, okay. So learn. So the girls can learn so, the science around soaps, and then they could um, formulate their own products, like shampoos, body wash, lip gloss, etc. And then once they have a product, they can use Bismabox with it. So, so we were able to pilot that, and it seemed like such a great concept. So we spent six months at the Microsoft Store piloting this concept, but using different topics. So uh, like the science and business of a lemonade stand, where we get into acids and bases first, so they understand how to formulate, what if it's too sour, what if it's too sweet? How can I neutralize it? What are the hydrogen, hydroxide, all that? Wow, so this is like the real science right. behind it. So yeah. we get into the science and then we go into an engineering phase and then we go into the business component of it. So all these themes kind of came up where it was um, slimeology, so the science and business of plastics. <laughs> but because plastic was so, um, important in in making games that the kids actually invent their own board games and so what these kids get out of it is not just the science or maybe use of technology or the engineering the math but they're getting language arts and they have art in there and we're getting the financial literacy and so it's really just a big component right, of right. everything as it applies to the real world so Super cool. yeah so we've created uh, over a dozen of those thematic type programs for elementary and, and middle school. So it's amazing how, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm not a science person, so I don't think I can go the high school level, but <laughs> it's meant to, to kind of enhance what they might be learning in, in school and how it applies to the real world. So I have a nonprofit too. So between let's talk about your nonprofit. Right. I mean, this these are the kind of things that we want to find out. I mean, let's get, let's get, let's get in here. So so the nonprofit is basically a uh, a, a way to get the um, program out to uh, kids who maybe don't have opportunities to do after school programming, which is where entrepreneurship would fall into. Mm -hmm. um, not that it wouldn't be maybe in the high school as part of the curriculum, uh, but it's usually reserved for after school programming. Uh, so so that's kind of where this niche is at, especially with school budgets, that it's a way for kids to um, start to experience uh, how to start a business and maybe gain some of these skill sets in, uh, you know, under other circumstances that they wouldn't normally be able to, whether their school doesn't offer it or it's a financial barrier or what. So now our are companies and other organizations giving you um, like grants and donations? So right now, yeah. So it's a, it's work? a. So right now we're we apply for grants. It's uh, brand new that we decided to do. It was really um, we were approached a couple of years ago from State Farm asking if we had a nonprofit at the time. Uh, and okay. so this was just kind of years in the in the making. What did we want to do with it? Um, you know, I have plans for where I'd really like to see it go and, and maybe give uh, middle school and high school kids opportunities to run a real business and by themselves, so student ran, student led, wow, where yeah. they take on those uh, positions where maybe they have interest and, and run a real business. So bring back more of that apprenticeship and find out where their interests lie. Even if it isn't just in business, I mean, maybe maybe their interest is in science. Well, you could go to Henkel that makes style soap, right? Soap again. Soap. <laughs> that's, that's one of, that's one of the, how we, we ended up figuring this thing out. But you could go there and your scientists have, you know, business knowledge. They're not just tinkering around with bubbles and saying, right. oh, this bubble looks really good. I wonder if someone would buy it. You know, they, they kind of understand that market anyways, and then go back in and say, say we already have identified a problem. Now we're going to make bubbles to, to solve it. You know, yeah, that's there you go. So, um, so, so maybe kids can figure out exactly what it is. There's really no, there's very little like career exploration when these kids get to high school and they go off to college thinking, oh, I'll be an engineer, I'll be this, I'll be that. And maybe some of it is just because the name sounds good. Sure. And then and then be very lost in, in what it is they're they're going to do. You know, when my daughter was approaching 
when she was in high school, she wanted to be, she's like, I'm going to go to college and be a writer. And I said, well, I'm not paying for you to get an English degree, you know, get something where you have a skill. Not that writing isn't a skill, but no, a marketable, right. transferable skill. So then it was a psychiatrist, um, but she didn't want to go to medical school, so that was, and she didn't want to be a school counselor. And um, it was really her own exploration where she figured out she wanted to go in the music business. And so that's what she's majoring in. But most of her friends had no clue what it is they wanted to do. Right. So, yeah, tell us about that, about how the whole biz in the box thing kind of helped lead her down that path. And then maybe you have an example of, of another, you know, kid that had a cool experience with that, too. So for her, she she liked the idea. My daughter liked the idea of making money um, because money meant freedom. Right. Yeah. It wasn't, hey, can I go to Starbucks and, you know, you give me five bucks. It was, I have five bucks, just drop me off at Starbucks. So, she uh, she started uh, her first business, uh, Plant, Paws, and Pacifiers, with her two girlfriends. And when they figured out uh, the advantage of having employees and that, you know, they, they thought, and these are 11, 12-year-old girls, yeah. they figured... If you charge someone $10, you have to pay your employee $10 for doing the job. They didn't understand <laughs> that you pay them less because you own the business, right? You have other expenses. Right. So within a week, they had this seven-man operation going on that no they way. were working at. Really? So she, over the years, she, she did three different businesses. Um, and you could see how things were changing in her in her head. You yeah. Know, this, like she was trying to, she was getting a clue of how money worked. And so she's not allowed to talk to me about her birthday um, until like that month, right? Because she would drive me nuts. She was like, my birthday, and I want to do <laughs> right. that. Almost obsessive compulsive. Yeah. So she comes to me three months before her birthday and says, I have a proposition. She says, I will pay for my entire birthday party with the condition that you stay upstairs during the thing. During the thing, what thing? The party, during the party. She, she, I have to stay upstairs, she gets to make all the decisions, she pays for it, etc. Okay, and I said, it oh. sounds interesting. Yeah, so I said, okay. <laughs> so she wanted a iPod touch, right? The, at the time. And um, her dad and I were not buying it for her. We were sending her on that <laughs> trip to DC, you know, that school trip. Right. And she figured if I had a party for her, there'd probably be five, six girls total. Because I don't know about you, but 14-year-old girls, 12, 18, ah, oh, they're horrible, right? They scream. <laughs> they're horrible. So five, six girls is what she would have. She figured if she threw herself for her party, she could have more kids there. So she spends $150 that she had earned from her businesses, and she buys uh, all the food, the decorations, she hires a DJ, she really? buys herself a dress, right? Oh my God. She does the whole thing. Yeah. And she invited 40 kids, Whoa. 32 show up, and they'd ask, what do you want for your birthday? She says, well, I'm saving for an, an eye touch. So they'd give her cash, right? right? Towards her eye touch. <laughs> so this no kid way. ends up with like $700 and it bought her eye touch. She's uh, saved for uh, Christmas and she had spending money for her DC. Oh trip. my God. Wow. <laughs> Which what? was a lot better than she was going to do had I thrown her the party. So she was starting to understand if I, if I invest money in it and I take a calculated risk, I have a return on it. Now, right. I know she used her birthday as that, as that lesson, but the fact is, is she was she was figuring it out, right? Absolutely. Um, Just to have her even thinking in those terms right. is like a huge victory. Right. You know? So I'm like, oh my God, this is this is what it was it was meant to do because I, I didn't want to create, you know, force this kid to start businesses as a teen and be burned with it. What I wanted her to do was 
practice it and understand what it was about because at any point in her life, if she's laid off, if she quits, if she can't find a job, whatever it is, she changes industries, she can always start her own business because she's had these years of practice. She understands what it's about. That and so she won't so be afraid cool. to go do it. Yeah. So that's really what the point of it was, yeah. was about. Wow. So, all right, uh, as uh, we're about to pull in here, so uh, any one last piece of uh, advice for anyone watching? And then tell us where people can get a hold of you. I thought you weren't going to do two questions at one time. Oh, God. Okay. Um, one question, any last piece of advice? Last piece of advice, let your kids explore. See, um, you know, even if they're not entrepreneurial, maybe maybe there's you know, still a little spark there that just is a little latent. <laughs> and uh, you can find us at www.bizinabox2x's.com. And that's B-I-Z. I-N-A-B-O-X-X.com. Fantastic. Well, thanks so much thanks, for... Thanks, uh, Coming along on the journey.